Hey everybody, welcome back to the Dungeon Dive. Daniel here, and welcome back to my week-long special series on Folklore the Affliction, Fall of the Spire. And this is going to be the first recap of Chapter 1 in Story 1, and also a continuing review, which this video series really is kind of a long-form review and recap. So, um, the first chapter of this city adventure called Into the City here where we were uh, having to explore the streets and back alleyways of uh, what is this city called? There's a uh, Yoro Trusk and it was pretty cool. Um, there were some rumors going around that there was some kind of like Jack the Ripper style serial killer on the loose bodies were being found, you know, missing limbs and organs, blood everywhere, homeless people were going missing, something terrible was happening in this city, and it was up to us to find out what was going on. My two characters, of course, being Chana, the Druidess, and Jaina, the Huntress. So what we had to do is, is we had to go throughout the city looking for these compass tokens, these were lettered uh, A through E, I believe. And each one we found, we had to read a little story. And each one of those led to some kind of random encounter. Sometimes it would be a skirmish. Sometimes it would be a battle. And there was also some non-combat encounters. Throughout this one adventure, I faced off against the cutthroats and the Watchman. I also fought a Gargoyle and at the end of this uh, battle I faced off, I'm going to cover up the stats, the Anatomist as a kind of little boss battle but he was a weaker version of the full Affliction Anatomist. And it was pretty cool. I like this adventure. Um, it was interesting in that on this city, sorry, it's, it's everything's kind of covered up right now, but you randomly rolled to see where your characters would start. And my characters started at opposite ends of the map. And so I had them kind of go off on their own. I should have had them meet together and then embark on the search for clues as a group. I think that would have been better because even though I came out okay at the end of this particular story, I did use one bandage and two boons. So I don't have these to use um, for the remaining two chapters in this story. My druidess, however, was incredibly fortunate in searching and she found a hand cannon, which is absolutely hilarious. A druidess running around with this sawed off shotgun. She also found this stone that prevents her from getting infected. And this is really cool. She found this cryptid bait, which I can use this when I am in an outside adventure map to summon this Sasquatch cryptid to come and help me on the fight. He can only be done once and then he's removed from the companion deck. I'm not sure when that gets reset, if that gets reset at all, but that's pretty cool. I like that. That'll be fun to use at some point. So one of the main things that Fall of the Spire adds to folklore is this initiative track. Now, I am a huge fan of initiative tracks in games. I like it when you don't just go like all the heroes go and then all the foes go, all the heroes, all the villains. I, I like it when things are staggered. It is a really easy way to add a little bit of variety and some easy tactics and strategy to a combat encounter just thinking about where you are in the position on the um, on the initiative track. I've always liked it in video games like the Grandia series. 
Grandia 2 especially, how you can see the initiative track and you can plan for certain things that you can't when you, it's either always random or it's just, you know, heroes, villains, heroes, villains. But the initiative track here is pretty cool. I wish it was maybe a little more simple like the one in Barnacle Bay. I really like the initiative track in the Cult of Barnacle Bay, how each of the different positions just has a simple bonus that you apply to the character who is at that uh, particular spot. Here, whenever you are on one of the adventure maps, so whenever you're not on the world map, whether there are foes present or not, as soon as you enter an adventure area, you roll a d10 for each hero and you place them at that initiative. So my druidess was at spot seven, 10 goes first, one goes last, and my huntress was at spot one. Then what you do is, is if you have two characters, any other character count, you only draw one. But if you have two characters, you draw two initiative cards from this small deck. And then you roll a d10 for each one of those, and you place a initiative card flag at that spot. So in this case, I had initiative card flags at spot C1 and C2. Then you take the corresponding other flag and you attach that to the card as a reminder of what powers you get if you are at those particular spots. If you were at spot six, you can spend one power point to move up or down the initiative track. So she could have spent one to move up to get the benefit of card um, character two. And the way these work is, so this is the initiative is Berserker. For four to five characters, re-roll your first missed attack. With three characters, re-roll your first missed attack with two different weapons. With two characters, re-roll your first missed attack each round. So it, you get a little bit more of a bonus with two characters. And that's really cool. That's a neat way that this game has developed to offset the difficulty of playing with two characters and I really like that. What I don't like so much is having to use power points to move up and down the initiative track to get into those slots. Um, I would have preferred it if you could maybe spend one power point or give up an action or movement but I'm going to play it as written for now just to see how it goes and there are quite a few different initiative bonuses that you can get and I do think from what I've seen that they are worth investing in getting to those spots. It is too bad that it is completely random because you could be like way you know you could be way down and just not have enough power points to ever get to that location and so that's kind of a bummer. You also when you set up the initiative track you also draw a foe tactics card and do the same thing so if there is a foe at a spot then they get that particular um, bonus and then also when a hero kills a foe that is at one of those flags you get an additional um, few little things as a reward so that's pretty cool when the foes come out on the initiative track, you also roll a d10. And if they come out one spot away from where the flag is placed, they automatically get to move to that spot. So that's how they move up and down. So unlike the Cult of Barnacle Bay, you are not like constantly moving up and down the initiative track, you know, vying for positions and that kind of thing. You're, I don't believe, I mean, at least I haven't seen it. Maybe there, maybe there are powers or items that allow more manipulation of the uh, initiative board. I'm not sure yet. One other thing this expansion adds is a new deck of random encounters called Town Events. 
So now when you are in town, even if you're just on the world map and you use the town, the settlement locations, there's kind of a push your luck element where the more locations you use, the better, the, the higher the chance is that you will have to draw a town event. And there are two different kinds of town events on each card, a thoroughfare and a back alley. Certain settlement locations are on thoroughfares and certain settlement locations are in back alleys. So depending on where a certain character is, that dictates which side of the town event card you are going to draw. So at the end or at the beginning of chapter two, it tells you that your characters can stay at the end for free. And then it tells you to draw a town service card. So let's go ahead and see which town service I'm going to have to deal with. And it tells you to use the thoroughfare side. So thoroughfare, all right, the attic. From a nearby home, we heard shouts for help from a figure hanging precariously outside an attic window. Roll a D6. A one. You help the man to safety, but he is a burglar. Skirmish with a highwayman and then gain an item. Okay, so I'm going to kick off chapter two when I start skirmishing against this highwayman as the beginning of chapter two. That's cool. I like it. What would happen at six? Jumping over a gate, you catch the lad as he plummets. Become swift. Okay, you would have gotten a, 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 a bonus there. A positive status effect. Now, since I stayed in the inn, another thing I can do is I can draw a rumor. So the rumors, I believe, came in the first expansion. And this is one of my favorite things about Folklore of the Affliction. I wish more dungeon crawl and more fantasy adventure games came with a deck like this. So this is a deck of side quests. And you, I believe, each character can draw one when you stay at an inn. And when you are out adventuring throughout the overland on the overland map, these are all going to be different little side quests you can go on with different little stories, different, uh, sometimes you have to travel to certain places to do a certain thing. And then usually these will have you set up a little um, adventure map and have some kind of little, like maybe like even like a little dungeon crawl. Um, really cool idea. I really enjoy this deck of cards a lot in the game. And I'm surprised that more dungeon crawls don't utilize something like this. So I'm going to go ahead and let's just draw one. This will be for my stay at the end. And I can't go out adventuring yet, but I know soon I should be able to go out into the overland and I will be able to tackle this uh, side quest. So we're going to take that one there. All right, so let's see what this side quest is. Death and Decay. A group of adventurers clad in distinct purple attire warn you that they have battled many undead. They encountered these walking corpses while traveling through the wilds of Kreml. You must hunt and destroy these undead before they harm the innocent. If you accept this rumor, consult this card after every off-road event is resolved until it is complete. You must kill four infest infested to gain an understanding about what is causing the plagued people to rise up and attack. After an off-road event has been resolved, roll a d10. All right, and then we can flip this card, and then we have to go to the alchemist's tower to do something about the undead. That is so cool. That just adds a neat little narrative side quest that we can go on while we were on our regular quest. Another thing you can do with this deck of cards is you can just have free play. You could just set up your um, overworld map, create a couple characters, and then just start going through the rumors deck to have like random adventures. Um, very, very cool. Again, I wish more um, games like this had side quests like this. Uh, Aftermath has some cool main quests and side quests. 
One deck I am not using while playing this game is the recipes and crafting deck. This is a whole nother deck of items that has different recipes and you can gain the recipes and then you can find or you can gain the um, ingredients and then you can find these recipes to combine the ingredients into different kinds of powerful items. I don't like this particular deck too much because I think it just takes too much time to put these together. It just, um, it ends up not being very interesting because you're constantly having to keep track of more things and then having to, it, it eats up space in your inventory and it just, I never find it very fun. So if you guys use this and you like it, or if you have developed maybe some house rules to make it a little more manageable or a little more fun, this was especially true when you were just um, combine all of your items, the chances of ever really getting the components, the ingredients that you needed to create your recipe was really difficult. And um, yeah, just to me, this game, this deck here takes away from the game rather than adding to it. But yeah, so all right, so that is the continuing review and adventure recap for story one chapter one next is chapter two and it is called manhunt we are going to be chasing the jack the ripper style anatomist who escaped our clutches after we defeated him hopefully we can track him down i believe we're going to be going down into the sewers underneath the city streets so all right guys we'll hope you enjoyed this and we will talk to you later. Bye-bye.